out of its own political needs and geopolitical purpose. The U.S. previous administration has adopted an erroneous and hostile policy toward China and resorted to every conceivable means to suppress and contain China. Some people in the United States clinging to the Cold War mentality and ideological bias took a series of actions which interfere China's internal affairs and undermine China's interests and disrupted the normal exchange and cooperation, causing unprecedented damages to China-US relations and plunging the relationship into the lowest point since the establishment of diplomatic ties. I'm a student here at SDSE. You can probably tell by the sweater, you know, West Side, and um, a bit about that um, that CCP representative from the Chinese government. I think his name was like Zhang Zhang Ping or something. And then when I looked at it, you know, the first impression right off the bat was, was just thinking like, dude, this is blatant CCP propaganda. Like, why is this guy allowed to come in? And then I was just thinking, you know, a few things. One, oh, it's probably you know, there's probably biz, you know, like business model, like. You know, well, I hope I don't get expelled for saying this, but I do think part of it is that um, SDSU might, you know, to, you know, a certain extent might be off the CCP's payroll, just like, uh, you know, just like Apple or just like, um, you know, LeBron and Nike. And and then another thing is um, maybe, you know, the whole reason why, um, why Zhang Ping was able to speak um, at our school, albeit virtually, is probably just because, you know, there's a good chance that, um, you know, like the Chinese government might be trying to influence not only our university and our community here, but a lot of other places uh, too, like the other campuses in the California State University system, the UCs or University of California, big one. And well, I would say, God forbid, hopefully they haven't reached the Ivy League schools, uh, you know, already. And uh, I say that just because I haven't looked too much about, you know, what kind of things they're teaching over at like Harvard and the other Ivy League schools. With um, you know, in terms of the future with Zhang Ping and his uh, lectures, especially what about COVID, uh, personally, I would just urge my, um, you know, um, not only the officials, but also, you know, my fellow Aztec, um, you know, in this university to not believe a single thing he says, especially since, you know, like, it's not just about like COVID, the Wuhan labs, you know, look at Hong Kong, you know, the Uyghur, you know, the Uyghurs, you know, like all these things, you know, like, you know, they're known for lying, you know, like, can you trust anything from the CCP? Issues in relation to Xinjiang, in essence, are about fighting against violence, terrorism, and separatism. It is just a lie fabricated with ul ulterior motives. Over the, over the past four decades and more, the Uyghur population in Xinjiang has more than doubled from 5.5 million to over 12 million. The freedom of religious belief of all ethnic groups is well protected in accordance with law. So personally, um, un, you know, um, just in case this guy comes back and has, um, and, and per, you know, speaks in person, I, I, would pers I would like to urge, you know, my university, my community to, um, you know, to not um, go to these un events, you know, um, unless under, you know, um, except for the only condition, you know, you know, just to protest and to, con, um, you know, confront this man and his, um, you know, and, and all the propagandic lies that his um, party is speaking, you know, from the mainland. Zhang Ping should definitely leave.